Hey there, welcome to Life Noggin. A lot of people are driven by the thrill of competition, and there is a good reason for that. Competition has driven our evolution. In fact, a 2009 study on the skulls of human ancestors found that social competition was a primary driving force for the evolution of human brains. Which makes sense, since securing food sources, mates, and general survival was a competition, and pretty much still is today. And since winning is such a big part of staying alive, it's no surprise that the brain is set up to encourage it. Since we're talking about evolution and competition, I've brought a friend who knows a bit about both. Copyrighted Monster Ball franchise world champion, Wolf Glick. Hey, it's good to be here. Uh, how come everything looks kinda off? Oh, we don't want to get sued, so all the, uh, monsters are just different enough. Is that supposed to be... No, 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 no. You don't have to say it. The audience knows what it is. Anyway, you're very used to competition, Wolf. Why don't you talk a little bit about what it does to the human body? Sure thing. During a competition, your brain releases testosterone, a chemical that fuels your desire to win, and cortisol, a chemical related to stress that helps prepare your body for action. If you win, your brain rewards you with dopamine, a chemical that makes you feel happy. On the other hand, losing feels terrible. It can make you angry, sad, and could even affect your heart health. While you should recover from these feelings eventually, the memory of a loss can stick with you. Going forward, you may avoid competition out of fear of losing again. And while I'm sure you don't want to hear this right now, you may be justified in that fear. The idea that winning leads to more wins and losing leads to more losses isn't new. I'm sure you've heard the term being on fire or in the zone. While many people believe that's all just superstition or an illusion, there's actually some research that backs it up. A study on equally matched tennis players found that winning a set gave them a boost in the following set, where they had a 60% chance of winning again, while losers lost some of their edge and had only a 39% chance of winning their next set. Some attribute this to a positive feedback loop, with increased testosterone levels leading to better performance and more winning, though studies are mixed on whether or not winning actually does raise your testosterone levels. Collectively, these are known as winner effects and loser effects, and they are seen in competitions between animals as well. To see how long these effects can last, researchers have looked at bugs like crickets and spiders. One study on fruit flies found that these effects lasted only a couple of hours after one win or loss, but losing repeatedly led to a longer-term loser effect, lasting at least 24 hours. Whether you win or lose, there are benefits to competing. For instance, having a rival has been shown to improve performance, and competition overall can boost brain function. This is even seen in competitive video games, despite what your parents may say. So what you're saying is, Pokemon is actually really good for you. Oh no, he said it. Run. Ah, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. While I go settle this battle in court, please go check out Wolfie's channel. If you're into, uh... Monsters of the Pocket? You'll love his videos. You might even see me in the comments every once in a while. Click the first link in the description to check him out. Do you have any questions for me and my world? Let me know in the comment section below and use the hashtag DearBlocko so I can find it. I'm making more episodes of DearBlocko really soon. As always, my name is Blocko. This has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.